And, and then I got stuck on uh, TikToks about how the eclipse was fake this weekend. <laughs> My girlfriend definitely pulled me aside and she was like, can I ask you a serious question? And I thought it was like, do you really believe in all that shit? And she was like, do you believe that the earth is flat? This is a big like point in our relationship. Kenneth, do you actually believe <laughs> that the earth is flat? Patrick Peterson, and I'm from Austin, originally from Lubbock. What do you do for a living, Pat? So I'm an art director. I uh, do a lot of stuff in the music industry and with local DJs and make flyers and really anything creative. All right, so today we uh, picked up this street performer off of East 6th Street. Um, I believe his name's Patrick, but we're gonna be cutting his hair today. <laughs> we're actually giving him a haircut for free. Thank he, didn't make enough, he didn't make enough tips last night. <laughs> it was a rough night, dude. <laughs> Bro, that David Beckham is so handsome. <laughs> it's unbelievable, really. Well, Karen gave you the... Uh, the ultimate compliment. Yeah, she you gave you the blushed. cosign. I've, she said you look like David Beckham. I was like, I, you're too kind, Karen, but like, man, I blushed. I was just sitting alone on my couch like, damn, I needed that shit. <laughs> well, I find his story more captivating than like Michael Jordan. Is like, there's like a mythology there where he's like a god. I'm gonna leave your fucking haircut like this if you ever speak about Michael Jordan. I like knew you'd do that, dude. David I Beckham is no I Michael Jordan. Bro, I almost like added a caveat, be like, I know what you're gonna say, but I'm gonna just say. Don't fucking <laughs> ever shit on Michael Jordan or compare David Beckham. Bro, to Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan's my favorite gambler. <laughs> And then I got stuck on uh, TikToks about how the eclipse was fake this weekend. <laughs> but I don't want to piss anybody off, right? It's just what I, you know, like to spend my time watching. My girlfriend definitely pulled me aside and she was like, can I ask you a serious question? And I thought it was like, <laughs> so I don't know what I thought she was going to ask me, but I didn't think it was going to be the question that she was going to ask me. And she was like, do you really believe in all that shit? And she was like, do you believe that the earth is flat? And I had to sit her down and be like, no, I just like, I like being entertained by that shit. She's like, bro, this is a big like point in our relationship. Kenneth, do you actually believe <laughs> that the earth is flat? Uh, my name is Jimmy Barr, and I live in New Zealand. Yes. And what brings you to the Harry Collective? It's changed the name. It's best of the best. I like when you use the brush and you like chop into the sides. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. Um, you, when you talk about the razor. Yeah. Then you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, thin out a little bit. Yeah. Um, chop in a bit of it. Take some weight out of it. And at the end, just maybe chop the fringe in a little bit. Bring Susan a little bit. Okay. Um, the fringe isn't actually too long this time. Mate, just give him the tools. He knows <laughs> what he wants. <laughs> yeah. And it's like to the tail. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you shouldn't be a tattoo artist anymore. Maybe you should no, go no, to the barber. Are you, are you learning? Yeah. With your mum? Yeah, yeah. You're doing it like two years now. Nice. Yeah, I left school. If you have it like overlaid, which I'm having, so you're having a, a, an open pattern put across it, you can still sort of see some of the underneath bit. So it, it works. But yeah, I'm having like a... What sort of pattern are you I'm having for? like a sort of psychedelic -y, swirly, just... Okay, so not mandala so, or So, mu mushrooms. Like <laughs> no, not mushrooms, not only mushrooms. <laughs> but just like, a, yeah, just like lots of swirls yeah, and yeah. just, yeah. For me, it's my, it's the red dragon. I, I'm, I'm so done with that. I'm, yeah. And when I first had it done, I was like... That's yeah. your best tattoo, man. It is. <laughs> Okay, my name is Mike Johnston, also known as Truth, and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. But before that, my dad was in the Army, so moved all over about every year or two, had a new home. So I'm a full-time artist, and I have been for, I guess, the last nine, almost 10 years, mostly painting murals. That's the bread and butter. And I was kind of thinking if you like that curl in the front, I can keep most of the length and maybe pour it, like take a section here and kind of separate it where it's almost like the sides are going to be nice and 
tight, mm -hmm. but then the front, you're gonna have more of that curl. How yeah. does that sound? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, you were teaching overseas. What were you teaching? Art. Art. Yeah. So nice. Elementary kids when we're in China and then middle school kids when we're in Kuwait. What took you overseas? I think just the, the passion to travel. Like, how was the food over in China? Yeah, it was it, it was definitely different than like Panda Express. You know, we think about like what would be like maybe Chinese American, uh -huh. like straight up Chinese food. Mm -hmm. uh, like we ate frogs. We ate. I was trying to think. There's some some foods that you would see at the wet market. Mm -hmm. It's still alive. Right. You could go and you, you know, so stuff that I, you know, they had like turtles, frogs, like, snakes, like stuff you would. And then we got the UFC fight too on Saturday. That would be before bowling. Yeah, that's a nice little day, dude. Gym, UFC, and bowling. Yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be a good that's Saturday. A boys' day. Give me your uh, predictions. UFC predictions. Yeah. On the co-main and the main. So, for sure, Kamza is going to starch Usman. Like, I really think it'll be in, like, the first round. I think for the main event, Islam Volk is going to look similar to the first fight until about the fourth round. I mean, you can see it just softens it up a bit where there's still some hair there to, like, fall down. But, like, I felt like if I were to go in there with Clipper over comb, like, it would just take too much of this off and like make it more of a, a boxy silhouette and we kind of wanted just to fall a little bit. Cause I like to, you know, Patrick's hair, the best way I can describe it, it's like a dandelion. You know what I'm saying? It's like gonna go everywhere and kind of do what it wants. So you want to be really delicate with it. Like a dandelion. Dandelions you gotta be delicate with and just fly away. I'm delicate as shit. Dude. Yeah, dude, you are. It's true. He's gonna cry right now. Probably. I got some little mistiness right here. I don't know if it's laughing or crying. I've been known to cry. And also more comfortable with yourself too. Cause I was gonna mention that on the tattoo tip. It was like, I remember like, whenever around that time you first started getting a shit ton of tattoos, like you were clearly like more comfortable like in your own skin. Like so much more even than you were prior. And it wasn't like just the tattoos. It, that was like a, a symptom of being more comfortable. Yeah. Whereas like there's a big shift. Well, it was one of those things for me, like, um... And what's the other one? There's also a cool one. It's uh, 0.25. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. We did do that last time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I yeah, quite like that. Yeah, because there's like a, that, that tiny extra taper in the bottom. Yeah, it makes it the haircut last in a little bit. Yeah. So I have to do my stuff. Yeah, well, that's right, because the last time you came in, you cut it yourself. And yeah. Oh, he does do it himself as well. Yeah, he does a trim round the. Yeah. He likes that. And he gets a bit. He hates it on his ears. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah. Dead. He's got to look. He's got to look right when he's out partying. Yeah. But it was a really, it was a really interesting podcast because he touches on lots of different things and he touches on like, you know, it's a it, we're we're a generation that this is the first time that that people in their thirties aren't better off than what, what their parents yeah. were in their thirties. You know. Um, like you said, the average age of someone buying for the first time now across the UK, across the world, is 47 years old. First time buyers now are 47. That's it, a standard average. 47. And he goes, you know, when it, and his parent, when it, when it, going back to his parents, it was, it was in, the, in you were in your 20s. Yeah. Yeah. When I think of you know Jimmy's generation trying to get on the ladder now, it's just it's how how. <laughs> how, much, oh, how, how, how much money you need saved up yeah. as, a de as a deposit now, you know? Well, they've got it to the point where it, they won't be able to. They'll just be, all that generation will be able to do is rent. It, 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 it'll be a throwaway society where it, whereby it will be, you'll, you'll rent your car, you'll rent your house, you know, you won't own anything. Yeah. When I was 18, I was your age. <laughs> 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 all, right, all right, Jimmy. <laughs> I taught 
out for 12 years, and so I was just doing that on the side, like little fun art projects, and I started doing street art when we moved to Austin, putting up posters around town, uh, you know, little tags here and there, and people started catching wind and say, hey man, you think you could do something for our, our office, or can you do something for our kids' bedroom? And so kind of, you know, putting up all those posters kind of, Got the word out. Yeah, I don't know if that was my intention back then. I just, I just felt like, okay, I'm not in a communist country that could put me in prison right off the gate for doing it. So I right. kind of felt like, all right, now's my chance to give it a go. Like there was a frame shop. We wanted this big uh, art print framed up, and it was going to be like over a thousand bucks. That was big print done. Yeah. And we're like, and then we just told the lady, like, or oh, what if we just paint a little little mural for you in front of your business, uh -huh. and we do like a trade? And she's like, all right, let's, uh, let's that, do it. There you go. You know? you know, how it is like if you're cutting for your work and you got that client, you got to keep that person happy. Versus if you cut a haircut or do any other kind of creative deal for yourself, mm -hmm. you're like, there's less pressure, and there there is a bit more of that that wiggle room. Right. And, and I think sometimes people, when they see a creative, they're like, oh, I would love to do what you're doing. Yeah. They don't see the non-sexy side where there's a lot of back and forth, meetings, approvals, and then, um, you know, late nights, early mornings, the, the sacrifice. Can you talk a little bit through what you've done so far with this hair? Totally. So what I've done is I taper down the sides a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I've got that tapered down to about a two. Didn't want to go too short, so yeah. like it's it's put, like I could take it to skin, but I figured with this, let's go like a little bit softer. I have the back trimmed up and kind of coming to a bit of a point, but the waves are kind of a little bit more accentuated, so I left more in the middle. And the top, I'm playing around with this. I was actually going to ask you when you do you tend to wear your hair more forward? Do you tend to push it any certain direction? Or okay. you, I, I like put this like curl cream on it, uh -huh. and then it just kind of where it it will go on. Let its it own. wear it like yeah. goes totally, um, totally. And you can see that just lightened it up just a bit, just so everything kind of just like slicks back and it's still kind of feathered right there. Which like I'm very happy with the way this is like turning out and falling because I left it a little lower the last time we cut his hair. And like I said, it's one of those things where like just understanding people's hair and uh, honestly, I haven't cut Patrick's hair since, it, since it's been this long before. Like in my barber career, he's always like, we've always done like buzzes and like skin fades like really high on him. So I didn't really know how his hair was going to react. And so I've been kind of playing with it the last few times and raising it little by little every time he comes in just because like you know we hang out pretty much every weekend and i'll see him out in public and uh you know we'll be like mid conversation but he doesn't understand i'm not listening sometimes i'm like looking at his hair and like things that i should have done different and then i'll zone back into like whatever we're talking about but there's just certain things i see like when it's in the wild and uh, i'm like okay i'm gonna do this next time and kind of like lighten this piece up a bit or take off you know more bulk here and so the last time I cut his hair, I left a little bit more bulk and I saw that it was a little bit kind of sticking out more than I would like. Um, and so I'm going higher and I'm not afraid to kind of play with it and, and do those things. Do you blow dry at home? No. No? <laughs> no? Bro, I'm an idiot, dude. Like whenever I don't use something, I just like give it away or throw it away. And so I used to have a blow dryer. I don't got a blow dryer anymore. I should get one though. On Netflix, I watched the David Beckham. Couldn't stop watching. Like, I, I was until 2 a.m. watching watch it last night. Yeah, I need to watch it. It's such a great. I'll tell you the next best one from that. Have you seen the Peter Crouch one? You need to watch that. But he's funny, so that would be a great dude. watch. Yeah, like he's funny. Around. Peter Crouch has exactly the same father as David Beckham. They're they're far, not. Oh, much, okay. Far, <laughs> far, <laughs> far, <laughs> I was like, like that yeah. was an honor documentary. <laughs> <laughs> My brother Peter Crouch. <laughs> Ted Baker. Yeah. Ted Beckham, I mean, not Baker. It's like me with the beer brand comments, mate, over the years. <laughs> you know, shit that I get given. If you, I, it's either the uh, the best of the best of the best, or yeah. you can't do a fucking job. I can't do my job, do anything. It's yeah. like, and it's like I always say, Carlos, isn't it? 
I'm neither the best or the worst barber in the world. But so yeah. I am just me. That's it. Even Eric yesterday on his video, he was getting some shit. People don't really get the like the context of the video. He was like talking about things that you know, so someone that had success. Yeah. But people just didn't get it. it was like, has, oh, so I'm not oh, successful. Has, I can't has, have that. Did you say no? You, sex whether success. you are successful in your successful sex, sex, sex success. <clears throat> Give me some more, and I'll tell you again. <laughs> Maybe like every two or three days. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, I feel like, yeah, I like the way it curls more, I guess, when it's a little bit more oily. Um, right. And so totally. In the summertime, obviously, you're sweating a ton, and it, oh, yeah, I'll probably end up doing it like every day. Mm -hmm. But like, ideally, it's more like, yeah, every two, two or three days. This is our styling paste. I'm going to take not that much right there. Mm. I'm going to start by putting in my palm. And I start by rubbing my palms together and then spreading to the fingers. Go through, kind of really get through the root. I'm not styling right now, so I'm not worrying about like the hair looking crazy or anything, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I just want to get it evenly spread. Just pull it through from the roots to the ends, you know? This is kind of my two step to styling. Step one, apply the product, get it evenly spread. Then step two is like, okay, let's, let's get it styled up, you know? So I'm gonna look at that. Step three is date night. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Step three Four. is getting lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so much better. It annoys me about myself that I forget the good feeling that comes with a haircut every time. Like the it's been a great experience. As a what did you learn? I learned how we are men and we are funny. We are great. Learn how to be a man. Learn how to be a man every time. That's from these learn. young men. That yeah. yeah. I loved it. I couldn't remember the last time I was in a barber shop, so just the energy alone is is special. Um, and our team did a did a did a wonderful job. 